Okay, here's a good one, or good two. Patient A and patient B. Question, is one, the other, both, or neither atrial fib? You've got 30 seconds. Okay, time's up. Remember, the definition for AFib, irregularly irregular with no discernible P waves. Both patients are irregularly irregular, but one patient has discernible P waves. Which one? Patient B. But look at these P waves closely. Look at this one. This one's a little bit more broad. This one's real pointy. This one's very pointy rounded, almost indiscernible. What is going on here? Well, this is what's going on. There's the pacemaker. There's the pacemaker. There's the pacemaker. The pacemaker is wandering all over the place. If the rate is less than 100, this is actually called a wandering atrial pacemaker. And when the rate is over 100, we call it multifocal atrial tachycardia, or MAT. This has a mechanism almost completely unlike AFib. In MAT, the atria actually contract, not just ineffectually or fibrillate. There's not the same clot issue. The clinical issues are not the same. COPDers own this rhythm. It is much more clearly seen in a 12 leaf. And if you're trying to determine if a patient has atrial fibrillation or MAT, you're probably going to need a 12 lead. Name that rhythm. Okay, by the numbers. First, the rate. So from this R wave to the next big box is 300. This is 150. This is very, very fast. This is between 150 and 300. This is actually a heart rate of uh, about 200. It is regular. All the R to R's seem to be consistent. So we have a regular rhythm. Is there a P wave for every QRS? What are these things? Are these P waves or are these T waves? Uh, what are they? We see the QRS, but what are those other waves? P waves, T waves? If there is only one wave between QRS complexes, then it is the T wave. The P is the first to disappear. Disappear? Where does it go? The rate is so fast that the P wave can get buried and not be seen. But wait a second, let's look at another rhythm. Well, there's no P waves there. Well, this is a junctional rhythm. This is slow enough that we could see P waves if they were there, but there is no P wave. This is not quite so fast, but still no P waves. This is a junctional rhythm, and more on that later. Suffice it to say for now that not all rhythms without P waves are junctional. So back to this one. Again, the problem with this rhythm is that it is so fast we cannot tell whether there is a P wave there or not. So we cannot be specific about it. We know the rhythm is supraventricular. Why? Because the QRS complex is nice and tight and narrow. The only way this ventricle could depolarize so rapidly is if the signal was propagated through the Purkinje system. And the only way to get into the Purkinje cells is from the top of the heart, through the AV node and the bundle of Hiss. So we know this must have originated above the ventricles. 
in the junction? Maybe. In the sinus or the atria? Maybe. We just can't tell. We can tell it's fast. We can tell it's supraventricular. So we call it SVT or supraventricular tachycardia. This is a particular kind of SVT. Notice it starts and it stops. As we watch it, there is a term for that. It's called paroxysmal. This is PSVT. The etiology for this is a rapid atrial depolarization that overrides the SA node, possibly precipitated by stress, overexertion, smoking, or caffeine. What do we mean by override? Remember, every cell in the heart is capable of being a pacemaker. Which one becomes the pacemaker for the heart? The fastest. This rhythm may be tolerated well by healthy patients for short periods. However, there may be a marked reduction in cardiac output that can precipitate angina, hypotension, or congestive heart failure. Treatment, vagal maneuvers, pharmacological therapy includes adenosine, calcium channel blockers, beta blockers, or DIG, or electrical therapy if the patient is very unstable. Consider if the patient is symptomatic with a heart rate over 150, synchronized cardioversion starting at 100 joules. Let's look at something different. Okay, you got 30 seconds. Name that rhythm. Okay, let's analyze. First of all, the rate. So if we take this complex right here, this is one big box, that would be 300. This is two big boxes, this would be 150. So this is between 150 and 300, very fast. It certainly is tachycardic. But look at the width of this, these waves. They're clearly wide. And what is meant by wide? Again, anything wider than 0.12 seconds or three little boxes. This is certainly that. Not all wide QRS complexes are ventricular, and another video delves into deep analysis of wide complex tachycardias, but this one is ventricular, so we'll call it ventricular tachycardia. See the waves? They all look alike. Therefore, we call it monomorphic. Mono means one, morphic means shape. So they're one shape. Causes for this EKG include myocardial ischemia, increased sympathetic tone, hypoxia, idiopathic causes, acid-base disturbances, or electrolyte imbalances. The result is decreased cardiac output, possibly to life-threatening levels. Worse, it may deteriorate into VFib. Treatment in perfusing patients include IV, O2, and consider immediate cardioversion. We may consider lidocaine or amiodarone. Non-perfusing rhythms, we should treat just exactly as we would ventricular fibrillation. Let's look at something similar, but not exactly the same. This looks like the last strip in two respects. It's fast and it's wide but they're not all the same shape. VTAC, but polymorphic, many shapes, not one, typically occurs in non-sustained bursts and we see prolonged QT intervals during breaks in the rhythm. This is not to be treated as standard VTAC. Slow administration of magnesium sulfate, one to two grams or 150 milligrams of amiodarone may be recommended.